Hey guys, this is Glenn with Sand Dog Kayak Adventure. In this episode, you're going to watch me clean up my filthy garage. You! Just kidding. We have lobster season coming up, and I've had some people request a video on how I set up my yak for lobstering, so that's what we're going to do today. Showing you how I set up my yak for bugs. But before I jump into that, I wanted to let you guys know that we've had a pretty cool first um, with our little company. We've made our first official commercial. It's going to be on Big FM 100.7 starting uh, very soon. I don't know the exact dates yet, but really soon. Uh, Roxanne took a video of the recording session because we thought you guys might like to see how it went. So uh, without further ado, let's get to the video, how I rig my yak for bugs, and our first commercial. You! This is from another life right here. Don't have to worry about this stuff no more. I haven't seen this in forever. Goodbye. For you kids out there, this is this is a cool thing to read. So, to be legal, there's a few things that you're going to need to do. And I need to do it on all of mine again this year, so I figure why not show you how to do it on one right now. So, you've got to get your buoy, all right? And it needs to have your full name and go ID on there. You can see here just a little bit. That was my name last year, and it's all worn off. So. To get your Go ID, it's on your fishing license right here. So it is not on your Mexican fishing license, it's on your American fishing license. So if you look right here, it says you can't really see but it's state ID and then right above state ID it says go ID All right and actually this is my guide license I wonder if I go I wonder if the go ID is the same I just looked, and my Go ID on my guide license and my fishing license are the same. So, 
That's interesting. All right, so to do this, you got to write your first and last name. Bam. Don't drop pen cap. And then my go ID. So now, this one is legal. So, to summarize, full name, go ID off of your fishing license, and then to build this thing out, you're going to want to put a hole in the bottom and put a weight. I've got a six ounce weight right here, and the reason is, to find this thing, that's what you need this for, right? So, check this out. This goes right in the top of here. Kind of wedged in there like that, so now the weight at the bottom holds it down so that this is always at the top out of the water because, guess what it does, ladies and gentlemen? You ain't gonna believe it. Oh yeah. This thing comes on and blinks. Doesn't look like nothing right now, but at night, it'll help you find your, uh, your pot. So, that's how you fish it. So you've got your weight at the bottom, You've got your first name, last name, your go ID. Now you've got your blinker at the top, your uh, light so you can find it. Now you've got your reel. So this is what you do. Everything's ready to go in the basket, in the pot. Already ready to go, sitting in it. Just there. Just like that. You're sitting in your kayak. You bring it over, you set this on your lap. Let's see if I can sort of do it. What do you think? You would be sitting here like this. And this is typically in your lap. What you do is you take this out, take your buoy out, take your spool or whatever you are using to hold the line with out. Once you've got that stuff out, then basically you grab this ball and you hold that. And now you've got your tube baited, everything goes down, everything's fine, you hang it off the edge of the kayak and you drop it down. Now what happens is it hits the bottom, boom, 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 it's going, it's going, it's going. You've still got this basically sitting here in your lap on the kayak. Of course, you've got a little bit more room. So now you've dropped it down. It goes down, 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 down. All of a sudden, boom, now the line goes slack. Well, if you just keep letting this out, letting this out, letting this out, there's 60 feet of line on mine. If you're in 20 feet of water, that means 40 feet if it's going to be floating down the bay. So you've got to stop it from floating. Okay, so what, what I do is, once mine reaches wherever it's going, what I do is, I just reach for mine through like this, and wrap it right here, and wrap it down here. It's sort of like what it's made to do, practically. And once that happens, now look, it won't go anymore. So now I'll have 25 feet of line out when I'm dropping into 20 feet of water. So when this is on the surface, it'll be within five feet of, my, of where I've dropped. Whereas if you let this whole thing out, it's gonna be floating all the way down the bay. You're gonna have lines everywhere. It's gonna be a nightmare. Trust me, you don't want that. So always make sure you wrap up your line on whatever spool or reel or whatever you have, just a few feet above whatever the water depth is that you're fishing in. Now it's time to pick them up. All you do is you pedal up to it, it's sitting in the water. I always grab it and throw it completely over the side. I take this and this, and when I have anything extra, and I throw it over the side, so now it is, I'm gonna pull it all out here so you can see. 
I'll take it just like this, pick it up, put over, and literally, I'm not gonna throw it because it'll might break my light, but sploosh over the side. Now it's out of my way. The extra line's out of my way, everything's out of my way, and now I'm from the side picking up my pot. Once you start, don't stop. The second you stop, you've pretty much lost all your lobster. Once you start, don't stop, okay? So you're picking, you're picking, you're picking, you're picking, you're picking, and all of a sudden now you get to right where it's coming up right here. As soon as you get to right here, you want to lift because you know it's at the end. You want to grab your ball right above your ball and hoist it out of the water. As long as it's out of the water and this bottom part has dropped down, your lobsters will be in there. So once you've got them out of the water, I typically, I'll lean it against the kite like this. Look at the bountiful catch that I have sometimes. And uh, take that and in the lap. In the lap it goes. Now I'm measuring. Now I'm throwing out shorts. I'm taking my, okay. So, oh, hold on. We'll talk about my bag in a minute. So now, same sort of thing. We've already got the, the, the length measured off, right? Because you're in the same, pretty much the same water column, same 20, 25 feet of water or whatever. So now, same thing. Make sure your bait's good. Okay, my bait's good. Grab this guy right here. Throw him over. Just set him right here. Oh, and this is why you don't want to um, stop pulling once you start. It's sitting flat on the water like this. Once you pull up, the bottom drops out. That's actually what's caught the lobster. While you're pulling, 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 this is at the bottom. The second you stop, this comes up like that. And now you've basically ejected the lobster out of your hoop. So like I said, once you start, don't stop. That's why. So now that you've uh, measured all your lobster, put your keepers out of the way, drop it back down, throw it over the side. Then you just lower it to wherever it gets to where you need it to be. Boom, 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 boom. And it gets to here again. You pull this up. You get to the point, oh, okay, it's down at the bottom now. I pull this right here through real quick. Go through here, go through here. Give it a pull tight. There it is, now it's not going anywhere else. Throw it both over. Now it's rebated, dropped again. I've got my keepers, I'm on to the next pot. Once you get a little bit of a system and you've done it a few times, believe it or not, that goes a little bit quicker. Hopefully you've got a lot of lobsters in there and it takes you a few minutes. But uh, that's basically how to handle your gear. Now, like I said before, <laughs> like I said before, I typically have this either in my kayak or in the back. And it's tied off with this by something. So I'll get my lobsters, boom, 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 throw them into here. The whole time I was doing that, I had this glove on, pulling the lobsters out of the basket and measuring them. I use my right hand because I find it's easiest to measure the lobster when you have basically its belly in your hand, you squeeze it like that because you can take the lobster gauge and because I'm right-handed, I can control the lobster and then get a good measure on them. If I do it the other way, it seems like the lobster has a little bit more control in my hand. This way I can basically manhandle the guy, hold him still, and uh, measure him like that. So that's all it is. It's hoop in your lap, pull a lobster out, grab him by the underneath so his back's to you, measure that guy. If he's a keeper, boom, in the bag, side of the boat, not a keeper, over to the side. You do that till the hoop's empty, drop it over the side. That's pretty much it. I carry three hoops on board my passport. Um, any more than that, you're getting pretty wobbly. Um, you get a little bit top heavy um, and that's really all you need to do that's all you really need is a uh, you know three i've limited out with three hoops plenty of times so just find the right spot go out and get you some bugs man i did totally screw something up i totally forgot one thing but watch this i can make it appear just like that boom the light need to be seen if you're going out at night catching lobster by the way that's when you go out and do it at night if you do it in the daytime you're pretty much wasting your time see that light that goes in the back of the boat and then I also have a headlamp is that bright so this is everything that I bring I'm supposed to go out uh, on the opener with uh, four or five of my buddies. Um, if I can get uh, 
200 likes on this video before the opener, I'll make a video that night and show you guys what happened. I'm going out with some mean green lobster and machines, I'll tell you that right now. Matter of fact, if you want to check out my uh, video last year on the opener, uh, we limited it out. Gonna go out with a bit of a crew this time, so if I can get 200 likes in this video, I'll make a video of that night and uh, put it up for you guys. You. And now I'm super excited to show you Sand Dog Kayak Adventure's very first commercial spot. Double you. Guys, we're making a commercial today, the first ever Sand Dog official commercial. We're at the 100.7 Studios. I have no idea what's gonna happen or how it works or whatever, so you guys are just kind of coming along for the ride. We're gonna find out together what it's like to make a commercial for Sand Dog on the radio. Stoked. So you're the big boss lady. I am right here, that's me. <laughs> Yes. First impression. Oh, welcome. <laughs> yep, that's me. Yes, we both please. need a separate one. Hi, Yay. how are you? How are you? Nice to nice meet you. you finally. I know this is Kim. This Hi. is Glenn. I know you're usually with my partner, Paulina. Yeah, yes. we were trying yes. to get her to go out on the water with us. Thank you, Joy. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, you know, oh. Hey, how are you doing? Hey. Roxanne, Let nice to meet you. No problem. We've never Thank done you. a commercial before. This is our first thing for our little company. This is a, a momentous occasion. <laughs> Sounds good. No problem. Whatever you want. This is going to be you right there. San Diego, Spanish for just kidding. Speaking of whales, who loves guided Hobie kayak fishing? This is Glenn from Sand Dog Kayak Adventures. Call 619-800-0998 to book a trip. And don't forget to check us out on YouTube. San Diego, Spanish for, just kidding. Speaking of whales, who loves guided only kayak fishing? This is Glenn from Sand Dog Kayak Adventures. Call 619-800-0998 to book a trip. And don't forget to check us out on YouTube. Like it? So it's time to yeah, we can, uh, That's just so weird to hear me doing that. Like, it's just... <laughs> no, yeah, I... It's, it, I've never heard, you know, I don't know. My favorite thing is, like, in recording commercials and stuff, and I'll walk into a store or something, and I'll, like, hear myself in the store. And I'm just kind of, like... I'm just going to not try to talk as much, just in case someone <laughs> recognizes me. Well, and that's one of the things that's... <laughs> all right. This is... All three of these are the same. Okay. Okay, well, I have it, um... She has it on her little phone, though. Here it is. Alright. Good to go. Do you live in San Diego and you don't know how to fish? Perfect! Glenn from Sand Dog Kayak Adventures here. Jump on a guided Hobie kayak fishing trip. Call 619-800-0998 to book a trip. And check us out on YouTube. Do you live in San Diego and you don't know how to fish? Perfect. Glenn from Sand Dog Kayak Adventures here. Jump if you live in San Diego and doesn't fish. Fishing trip. Call 619-800-0998 to book a trip. And check us out on YouTube. That was pretty exciting. That was kind of cool. It's funny, I thought I was going to be a little nervous. was not nervous at all. Just banged it out both in like the first time. <laughs> They're going to send us an email that lets us know what day and what times and all that stuff it's going to play. So I'll let you guys know, but that's pretty cool. I don't know why. It sounds, it may not seem like much, but for our little mom and pop company that we've been doing from the ground up, just the two of us, to now have a commercial that's going to be on the radio and that's all because of the person behind the camera she don't ever like to be on film she doesn't like to make a big showing and she's probably mad at me right now but all i do is take people fishing and she does all the other stuff if you see us on instagram news break youtube pinterest reddit i don't even know she's got us on everything trip advisor i don't even we have so many things i don't even know um but that's all her man like i said i just take people fishing and all the things that we get and have are because of my silent Parker partner behind the background, behind the camera. So, just so you guys know, she's smiling and she's happy right now. She won't show you, but she is. 
thank you guys for uh, checking this out. It's been really cool. Um, I hope you found this interesting. We will check you back in with some fishing. You.